Welcome to WHBC TV. I'm Dr. Tade Boboye, the lead pastor of Wellman Heights. We're here at the taste of Wellman, at the taste of Lawrence. This is a day the Lord has made. But Simon said we'll rejoice and be glad in it. And we're glad you've come and you've joined us in this broadcast. Later on, I'm going to be invited to come with me into the sanctuary with God's people in worship and in word as we continue on or as we come near to the end of our series that we've called Great Things Come in Small Packages. And this morning we're going to be hearing from the fourth and final little creature that is going to be giving us some secrets to his wisdom. And this morning we're going to be talking about the secret of the spider. Produce yourself. Produce yourself. So why don't you get a pen and a paper, come with me, and let's go deep into the Word of God. And above all, I pray that the Word of God will get into us. And I'll come back and pray with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Receive the word. Mm -hmm. Let me say that again. Gracie, the value of a thing does not depend upon the size or the looks of a thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I know you're still looking at the person next to you over. You're still looking them over, wondering if they are for the real. I, I know some of you are still sizing me up, wondering if this pastor is the real deal. Come on. If, you, if you've been with me for nearly 13 years, you'd know whether... <laughs> if you've been with somebody for nearly 13 years, that long, you'd know whether they're for real or not. Because after a while, you'd know what you see is what you... Oh, 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 look at your neighbor and tell him, I'm the real deal. I ain't no fake news. I know some of you like to judge a book by its cover. But not this book. Uh, tell your neighbor not this book. And the lesson that Ego, the writer of Proverbs chapter 30, has been teaching us is you can easily look at a small little ant or a feeble little coney or a tiny little locust and say they ain't much but don't let the size of a thing fool you. Just because the package ain't much doesn't mean the gift inside the package isn't big. And God says if you can look, if you can just look past how little the ants are. If you can just forgive how feeble the conies are. And if you could just, 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 just overlook how unorganized the locusts are that they don't have a king to tell them what to do. If you can overlook all those in the old secrecies, then you may learn some great and valuable lessons from them on how they are able to not only survive the vicissitude of the jungle but also you can learn how they are able to thrive in a world that is enamored with bigness oh come on somebody wouldn't you say the ants and the conies and the locusts have taught us well because we've learned that we need to prepare from the ants. Put a picture of the ants up. We've learned that we need to prepare from the ants. Meaning, whatever possibilities you're looking to God for in this your year of possibilities, whatever possibility you're looking for God for requires you to prepare for it. Otherwise, if it comes, you may be caught with your pants down. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, don't be caught with your pants down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Some of you are still riding low, but, but don't, don't, don't be caught. Don't be caught with your pants down. 
is not where a believer needs to be. A, ne- a believer has to stay ready. Because the wind blows, Jesus says. From whence no one knows, and where it goes, no one knows. But so are those who are born of the Spirit. In other words, you've got to be ready for the wind. Ah, you may not know this, but one of the reasons we moved from one morning service to two morning services is because like an ant, we're preparing ourselves for growth in the summer, even though our winter is not here yet. Oh, where are all my ants in this house? And we've learned from the little locust, the little locust, Oh, I'm sorry, we've learned from the conies. Go back to the conies. We've learned from the conies uh, to protect our possibilities. Knowing how feeble and frail you are, that when your heart is overwhelmed, you say, Lord, lead me to the rock. That is higher than high, whose name is Jesus. Somebody say amen. amen. Then the last time we were here last Sunday, we we heard from the little locust. The little locust who, although can't fly, locusts can't fly. They got wings, but they can't fly. A locust who, although can't fly, but catches the wind and let the wind and lets it lets the wind, it lets the wind, oh, it lets the wind propel him and carries him for miles and miles and miles, although he can't fly because he's a straight winged narrowed insect but when the when the locust is about to go somewhere ah brother is when he's about to go somewhere the bible says the locust will position himself ready and when he says the wind is blowing the bible says then the locust will just jump into the wind and the wind will take him for miles and miles and miles And somebody here, when you know the wind of God is blowing too. And you know that's when you need to propel yourself for the wind of the Spirit to carry you to where no one in your family has ever gone before. Oh, if I'm talking to you, if I'm talking to you, thank you, Jesus. If I'm talking to you, just, just for, for the sake of those who were not here last week, I just want you to just stretch out your hands like this. Stretch out your hands like this, L- like a locust. Just stretch out your hands and, 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 and like you're about to propel yourself into the wind. Just, just stretch out, stretch out your hand like this, like you're about to propel yourself into the wind. And I want you to just, just holler out, into the wind I go! Into your wind I go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Into his wind I go. Into his wind I go. I'm moving. We're moving higher. His wind is carrying you. The devil is a liar. He thought you just, the devil thought just because you can't fly, that means you can't move. <laughs> see, 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 some people are looking at your deficit. And they're thinking your deficit is going to be your liability. But they don't know the God that we serve. That in all those four creatures, he said, though this one is weak, yet. (laughs) Though this one is this, yet. (laughs) Though this one is this, yet. (laughs) Are there any yet people in this house this morning? His wind is carrying you. And the devil thought just because you couldn't fly like the locust that you won't go anywhere. But the devil is a liar. I said the devil is a liar. And his wife is the mother of liar. Because you are moving. And this church is moving. And we're not stagnant. We are not stuck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
That's why there's excitement in this place. That's why we're worshiping like we're worshiping. I said that's why we're shouting like we're shouting. Because like the locusts, there's a sense in our spirit that Wilma is on the move. Oh, we know we're not what we need to be. <laughs> if you think I'm an ostrich, then you don't know me. I'm a locust. I know we're not where we need to be. And we're, what, we're not what we need to be. But thank God, we're not what we used to be. I said, thank God, we're not what we need, we're not where we used to be. I know I have not seen what we shall be. What we know is, is wind is carrying us. I fight, I fight somebody next to you and say we're on the move. Mm, we're on the move. We're going somewhere. We're going somewhere. Hey, hey, no stopping us now. Oh, I feel like the BGs this morning. And that's why my brothers and my sisters, there's yet one more little creature that is getting ready to speak to us this morning. This final little creature we're going to look at is a little unique compared to the other three we've seen so far. Hmm. And if we don't hear from him too, then this series won't be complete. Because the spider... Oh, and I think, I think verse 28 is referring to a spider. I'll tell you why I think Ego is talking about a spider and not a lizard in a minute. You, you know how some of your translations say a spider and some say a lizard? Have you ever wondered what's going on there? Okay, all right. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to just take you briefly into the Hebrew language school. But, 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 but the spider is so important for us to learn from Dickin Neal because she is the only one of the four that the Bible tells us where she ends up in. Uncle Tim, shut your... The Bible talked about where she ended up. She ended up in the palace. Oh, our text says, the spider, give me verse 20. Yeah. Oh, thank, oh, you're so, you're on, brother Franzo. The spider take it hold with her hands. And it is in, is in, oh, oh, there's somebody, there's a message for somebody right here there's somebody there's a message right there for somebody this morning who is worrying about where you started in life and you're worrying where you are right now because if the spider is going to to, to teach you something if if he's going to teach you something he's going to teach you that it makes no difference where you start in life It is going to teach you that it makes no difference where you start in life. What really matters is where you end up in life. Is there anybody in here who wants to end up in the king's palaces? Oh, if you do, if you do, if you do, and I, I, I honestly believe sincerely some of you do, then you need to know that any time, listen to me very carefully, any time you have a chance, to hear from anything or anyone that end up in the king's palace, you need to sit at their feet or that thing's feet and learn from them the secret of how they get to the king's palace. Mm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? So this morning, we're going to begin to learn the secret of the spider. 
How is it that the little itty bitty spider, the little itty bitty spider, how is it that it can get into a palace? That a mighty lion or a big elephant cannot walk in and stroll into. <laughs> uh, first, first, before I get into this message, I need to ask you, how many of you are arachnophobia? Okay, good, good. Some, some, people, those, uh, some people already know what I'm talking about because they're arachnophobia. But some people don't. They say, what's that? Well, well, well arachnophobia is the fear of spider. Oh. How many of you love spider? Like my daughter Naomi. <laughs> oh, I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> How many of you don't fear spider like this guy? Put the guy, picture of the guy up. How many of you don't fear spider like this guy? The next slide. Oh, it is real. But, but don't worry. Don't worry. If you have the fear of spider like Naomi, I promise you before this message is over, you're going to become a spider man or a spider woman. You might even have a spider as a pet. Because God says, I want you to learn the secret of a spider. And Auntie Mabel, how can you learn from somebody if you don't want to stay close to them? Or even sometimes you might even put them in the pocket. <laughs> or put them beside your car, your next uh, passenger seat while you're driving and they can be giving you their secret. <laughs> oh, oh, you watch. Before we're done, before we're done this series, before we're done this mini-series, you're going to love spider. Oh, yeah. You're going to say, Dad, I want a spider as a pet. <laughs> Now, now, I know some of your translations in verse 28 talks about the lizard. NASB, NIV, Amplified, they talk about the, sp the lizard. And all the translation talks about the spider. Lizard, spider. Which one is it? Biblical scholars have banged their heads to no avail trying to figure out how a literal lizard turn, can turn into a scriptural spider. How can a lizard turn into a spider? Well, but here's where knowing Hebrew language comes in. Let me take you to a, a quick Hebrew language school. In Hebrew, the word simalti, simalmith, simalmith, everybody say simalmith. Ah. The word simalmith can either be translated spider or lizard. In other words, when a Hebrew person says simalmith, You have to ask, which smell myth? A lizard smell myth? Or a spider smell myth? But most biblical commentators are of the opinion that smell myth here is referring to a spider because that translation fits more with the context of something weak. Doing something great with her hands. Anybody in here know what a spider can do with her hands? Oh. The text says the spider take it hold with her hands. Oh. I feel like preaching right about now. <laughs> but but I, I don't want to get ahead of myself. I got to teach you first. So God says to someone here this morning. I want you to study the characteristics of the spider so that you can begin to understand that you have something powerful on the inside of you that you may not know 
or think you have. Mm. Oh Lord, help me preach this message like, I, I, like I'm already feeling it. Look, look at the person next to you and tell them, it's in me. Mm, 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 mm. I, I, I know, I know when you look at me, you may not see much, but it's in me. Don't let this look deceive you, because when you look at this little ebony spider, I know you don't see much. So let me go ahead and give you her profile. Let me give you the profile of a spider, what she is, not, and then I will dazzle you with what she is. First, what she's not. She's not attractive. Put it up. She's not attractive. G give me that picture of a spider. Give me that picture of a spider. It doesn't that look cute? <laughs> see, 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 uh, Sister Donna wants to just take that as a pet and bring her home. She's, she's loving this thing already. No, no. That's ugly as ugly can be. <laughs> I mean, uh, you're, 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 I'm talking about. Uh, <laughs> I'm talking about superlative, <laughs> superlative ugliness to the hundredth degree. A spider have six eyes and eight legs when most other insects have four legs and two eyes. This guy just said, I'm going to get me all the eyes I can get. <laughs> and I'm going to get me all the legs I can get. <laughs> On top of that, a spider have no vertebrae. She's spineless. She ain't got no backbone. Unlike most other insects, you can't even consider you can't even consider a spider to be an insect. They put him in between insect and something else. I don't know. Google it. They don't consider a spider to be an insect. I'm top four or whatever they call them. Ar Arach yeah. What do you call it? Arachnin. That's it. See, I did my research. Unlike most other insects, you can't even consider a spider an insect because she has no skeleton structure inside her body. She has no skeleton. That means a spider can easily be knocked down. Have you ever seen one of them spiders hanging from your ceiling? Uh, Sister Audrey, and you take the broom, and I know you have a broom in your house. I've been in your apartment, and you take the broom and you go, whoosh, and the spider will go, wee, down because it has no backbones. She's spineless and true. You may knock a spider down. But the reason you can't knock a spider out. Oh, somebody missed that. I, I said you can, it's true you can knock a spider down. But the reason you can't knock a spider out is because when you swipe her, when you sweep her with your broom and you knock her down to where she has nothing at all to stand on. But because of what the spider have in her that she releases, she would Take hold with her hands a thread that she drops down with her to break that fall. Oh, you're not hearing me. So, so, so the spider may not be attractive, but she has something in her that she produces that makes her. Give me what she is. Let's look at what she is. We know what she's not. She's not attractive. Let's see what she is. The next slide. There's something in her that she produces that makes her to be what she is, productive. She's productive. Write that down. She's productive. 
And some of you here like the spider. You've been knocked down by life. Time and time again. To where you have nothing to stand on. Things have been thrown at you. From every conceivable angle. You should have lost your mind. You should have had a nervous breakdown. You should have walked out of that messy marriage. You should have quit that end, end, dead end job. And even though you got bruised on your way down, got struck down on your way down, you didn't get destroyed like the spider. You were knocked down, but you were not knocked out because there was something powerful deep down inside of you that the enemy can see but that's what God used to break your fall. Oh, somebody who knows what I'm talking about, just, just talk to your neighbor and say, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here. Oh, yeah, 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 I'm still here, I'm still here. So that Paul could say, Paul could say in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 7 and to 10, it says, but we have this treasure in us, What's inside of us, we have this treasure in earthen vessels that is surpassing greatness of the power may be of God and not from us. Watch this, verse 8. I like this. See, we quote this and we stop. But you got to go to verse 8 and 9. It says, because we have this treasure in us. Ah! The surpassing greatness of God. Here's what breaks your fall. Here, Sister Mabel is what is making you still not lose your mind. He says, you are afflicted in every way. But you're still here. You're crushed in every way. But you're still here. You're perplexed in every way. But you're still here. You're despairing in every way. But you're still here. You're persecuted in every way. But you're still... You're forsaken, but you're still... You're persecuted, but you're still. Yeah. You're struck down, but you're still. Yeah. Is there anybody in here grateful that you're still here? Yeah. If you're beginning to feel like a spider, Benjamin. If you're beginning to feel like a spider man. And Sister G, if you're beginning to feel like a spider woman. This morning. Just go ahead and give your Lord, your King, in whose palace you are. Go ahead and give him some spider praise right now. Just give him some spider praise. Hallelujah! I'm still here, Lord. Struck down, but not destroyed. I'm still here, Lord. See, see, what made this spider make this list? What made the spider make this list of four great small things on earth is not what you can see about the spider on the outside. Because on the outside, it's unattractive. On the outside, she's as ugly as precious. She's not something you want to get cozy with as a pet. That's why some people are... are, are, are Uh, an acrophobic, phonia, whatever it is. <laughs> I, forgot, I forgot whatever it is. Arachnophobia. Yeah, that's it. My wife knows because she's arachnophobia. Oh, you like spiders? Oh, we're going to get one. <laughs> oh, we have a house. He said, we have, a, we have spider in our house. Oh, I, I'm, coming, I'm coming to you. I'm coming, I'm coming to your house too. I'm coming to your house too. But what the spider has on the inside of her is huge. It's grandiose. It's magnanimous. It's groundbreaking. Watch this. There's a divine insight here. You may not see it, but there's a supernatural progression here, Sister Janet. I'm going to show you what the Lord showed me in this text. Never saw it before. There's a supernatural progression here. Watch this. Give me the picture of the ant. If the ant have taught us to prepare 
for our winter in the summer. Watch this progression. If the conies have taught you to protect your possibilities that God has been preparing you for. I just dropped a progression there. Ants prepare. Coney hide. Because God is preparing them for a possibility. That they have to hide like Moses. Like Moses' mother hide Moses. A possibility. Ah. And they hide themselves in the rocks. And you've been hiding yourself on the, in the rocks until you hear the Lord says to you, it's show and tell time. Then like a locust, you're about to propel. Oh, I'm giving you a progression here. You're about to propel yourself into the spirit's wind of opportunities and possibilities. The moment you sense the wind blowing, because it's no longer time to wait for that so-called perfect time. Some of you are still waiting for that perfect time. Oh, pastor, I hear you. I, I, I'll do it when I, I'm a little older. When I get a little older. I'll, 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 I'll do it when I have some money in my pocket. Yeah. <laughs> when is that? <laughs> oh, 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 I, I, Lord, oh, Lord Jesus, I, 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 I would do that. I would do that when my kids are all out of the house. <laughs> really? No, no. When would that be? Don't you know? When they're out, they're not really out. <laughs> they, they, they will still come. They will still come and open your fridge and eat your food. You know what I'm talking about. You know, you know what I'm talking about. He's always complaining to me. No, I'm kidding. But like, like a locust, you know, there's no such time as tomorrow or next month. But the Bible says today. Somebody said today. Yes. Somebody said today. Yes. Today, if you hear my voice. Ah, see. Because the wind is blowing. The wind is speaking. It's talking. You got to hear his voice. They all like, you got to hear his voice. He says, he says, he says, he says, then if, 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 if there was a spider here this morning, a message to you to build up that progression, to bring that pro progression to climax, a message to you will be produce yourself. Hey! Because now you are ready. To take hold of that possibility. Not just anywhere. But in the king's palace. Because that's where you, the son, the daughter of the most high king. Oh. Some of us are just waiting for little crumbs. Some of us are just waiting if we can just get to that next level. But I'm saying... You as a son, you as a daughter of the king of kings and the lord of lords are not going to settle for some. You're going to settle and you're going to end up in the king's palace because that's your heritage. That's your destiny. That's your divine ending. Somebody shout yes. Because you'll be the head and not the tail. I said you'll be the head and not the tail. Because you'll be above and not beneath. So why, why do you want to end up anywhere else other than the king's palace? Why would you want to settle for second best? Hey! The days for Christians and believers settling for second best are over. I just prophesy over somebody right now. Can, can, you, can you see the incongruity? Hey. Can you see the incongruity that the Lord of glory is showing us in this text? This is, evangelist Beardon, this is not natural stuff. This is supernatural stuff. This is deep, deep secret church. Deep secret. 
Hey, the Bible said the secret things belong to the Lord our God. And the things that are revealed belong to us and our sons. Hey, this is deep, deep secret. That even in Buckingham Palace, secret service, guards can't figure out how a spider gets in. <laughs> Oh, I, I, I mean, I mean, have you ever thought about this? How did the spider get into the king's palace? You read it, you yawn. That's what I'm telling you. When you read your Bible, engage with it. How in the world did the spider get into a king's palace that a lion can't walk through and an elephant can't even venture to stroll in without the mountains detecting them? But you can't keep a spider out. Hey, I said you can't keep a spider out. Sister Mabel, you, you and Uncle Ivan, you live in a penthouse. You live in a penthouse. Ah, have you seen a spider in your penthouse? How in the world, how in the world did that spider ever get that high? You, you could be sitting in your hotel room. You could be sitting in your hotel room, 15, 15 story, and you're laying down there on your bed, and all of a sudden you saw this thing moving. And you, oh, it's a spider. Have you ever wondered how that spider got there? Did he walk up the stairs? <laughs> did he take the elevator? <laughs> how did you know which button to push? <laughs> I, 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 that's how I interact with my Bible, my, 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 the word, brother Tywo. That's how I. That's how I interact with my Bible. How did he get? How did he get up there? But here she is, Lady Sashi. Ego says, if you had gone to Buckingham Palace, you will find Spider Woman. Dikin Kuma, you find Spider Man. You find them there. Whether you invited them or not, they will make their way up. Whether they are ugly or not attractive, they will make their way up. Oh, oh, oh. I have come to talk to some church folk here this morning who are on their way up. I said I've come to talk to some church folk this morning who are on their way up. I've come to talk to some young and some old. And some middle age who have made up their minds that they are palace bound. Whether they're invited or not, that is where they would end. If you are a spider, look at another spider man or another spider woman next to you and tell them, produce yourself, produce yourself, produce yourself. Whew. Oh. Oh my goodness, for the remainder of our time, uh, for the remainder of our time, okay, for the remainder of our time, let me share with you three divine secrets of productivity. Whew. Hey, three divine secrets of productivity that you have, like a spider, that you may not know you have, but would help you produce yourself. Ah, and I want to share these divine secrets with you through a spider woman in the Bible. A spider woman, yes. A spider woman in the Bible found in 2 Kings chapter 4. But who didn't know she was a spider woman? Uh, now, I preached on this text earlier on this year when I talked about go borrow vessels. How many of you still remember that powerful message, go borrow vessels? Mm -hmm. but, 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 but now I, I want to show you some things that I didn't have time to show you in January. Because I'm always running out of time. I, I, and I told you, if you remember, I told you I was going to come back to this woman. Because I already mapped out what I was going to be doing all year. I knew I was still coming to this woman. So if you don't see me give you my second point and third point today... 
Come back next Sunday. I will still give it to you. It's there. It's not going anywhere. Tell your neighbor it's not going anywhere. I appreciate your hunger. But, but, but we're two services. We've got to quickly switch around things. I've got to change. I've got to, we've got to refresh ourselves and then come back for 11 o'clock people. That's why we've got to rush things up. But, but let, me, let, me, let me just give you a sneak, a, 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 a taste, a taste bite of, 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 of this woman. And I want to show you this woman from the perspective of a spider woman. Sister Esther, from a perspective of a spider woman. Verse 1 says, Now a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophet cried out to Elisha, Your servant, my husband, is dead. And you know that your servant feared the Lord. Most biblical commentators believe that this might be Obadiah, prophet Obadiah, who saved many, 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 many prophets from the hands of Jezebel and Ahab. He feared the Lord. Many commentators believe this is this man. We don't know, but that's what many people believe. He was a good man. But there's something he did that we don't even know. That's why you see, when you see people, don't judge them by the books. When you see people panhandling and asking you, spare me some change, don't judge them. You don't know how they got there. Some of them got there by their own hands, by their own fault. Other, other people, they got there because life got them there. Don't judge the book by its cover. This man did something. And most would judge him for what he did. And I know, I, I, not I know, I can surmise that the reason why he did it is because of the thing I just shared with you, how he took care of the prophets. But it ha something happened. Look at what happened. And the creditor has come. Creditor. What does that tell you? He owed a lot of money. He was in debt. He owed a whole lot of money to his, to his eyeballs. And now it says the creditor has come to take my two children to be his slaves. Lord have mercy. Are you sensing the predicament that this woman is in? This woman has been struck down in so many ways like the spider. Wouldn't you say? First of all, she, was, she has an emotional problem. The love of her life just died. Huh. I wouldn't know what that is like. The love of my life is here. Second, she has a financial problem. Her husband had left her with some debt. Again, in my study, some biblical commentator says this man got those debt because he fed all those 700 prophets from his own pocket. And you know when that time was? Famine. So how can you feed 700 prophets out of your own pocket, sister Antipatsy? At a time of famine and not going to debt. See why you can't judge him? Because sometimes we don't know the whole story. And that's why we should be hesitant, hesitant to judge. Don't judge. God is only the judge. Judge and you shall be judged. With what measure you judge, it shall be measured back to you, says the Lord. So, but, but let me say this though, <laughs> but don't you, don't you hate it? Don't you want to kill people who die and leave you some stuff you now have to worry about? <laughs> Whether good or bad, whether good or bad, don't you want to kill them? But they're dead, you can't kill them. <laughs> yeah, sometimes because of stupidity. Right? 
but we're not going to judge. Third, she has a collateral problem. Not cholesterol, collateral. The creditors are now about to take her only two sons she had left. Bimbola, two sons she had left. Talk about knocking you down with a heavy blows. Like you knock a spider down. How many know that sometimes when trouble visits you, it doesn't come alone? Can I get a witness? It often invites its cousin, marriage breakup, and nephew appliance breakdown, and uncle bill payment. <laughs> Am I talking to some real people in this house this morning? Oh, my time is about up. Oh, my time is up. I, I, yeah, I told you I didn't tell you number one yet. I, I told you I'm, I'm still in page 23 of 38. You're all going to come back next, next time. Stand up on your feet. Worship team. Welcome back. I trust you were blessed by that message. What a mighty God we serve. This morning was a powerful time and a powerful day in the word of the Lord. As we hear from the spider, which is going to give us some secrets about how to produce. And this morning we learned that the spider ain't attractive, but it's very productive. And we ran out of time. We couldn't talk to you about the three divine secrets of productivity you're gonna to have to come back next time as we go deep into the scripture oh it's gonna be a good one because a juicy one is coming what a mighty god we serve as i said the secret of the lord belongs the secret belongs to the lord our god and the things that are revealed belongs to us and our children and this day we're going to be hearing a powerful powerful message from the mouth of the spider that you don't want to miss because God says, if you look at the spider, you may not see much, but there's great words and there's great secret in the spider. That secret that keeps him from being knocked out. You could knock a spider down, but you can't knock him out. And we're going to see what that secret is next time we meet. Why don't I pray with you right now that you begin to understand, you begin to go into the deep things of God and know that greater is he that is in you than he was in the world. Let me pray with you right now. Father, I thank you for that person which was in this broadcast. I pray, dear God, that as they begin to go deeper into your word and, and, and thanking you for these four little creatures that have been teaching us so powerfully the things of God. I pray, dear God, that as we go into this final creature, Father God, the spider, that we will learn to, 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 to be like the spider. Father, that though we, we were struck down, Though, though we're forsaken, though we're despised, those were, though, though we're, 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 we're crushed, but Lord, we will not be broken because of the one who is with us. Thank you that you've broken all our faults and thank you that you are a good God and faithful is your name and awesome is your presence. So Father, we thank you, we worship you now in Jesus' mighty name, amen. Listen, if you received that word, why don't you comment at the bottom of your screen? Let us know how much that was a blessing to you because when you're blessed, we're blessed. And above all, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is glorified in heaven. Amen. Or better still, why don't you come to one of our two services? We're live at 45 and 11 a.m. And we'll take you deeper. And above all, I'll give you the best seat in the house. We'd love to see you. Come join us. And God bless you. And have a wonderful rest of the week. Till we see you again. Love you. Bye for now.